Hey guys, a couple weeks ago we burnt this uh, tire off, did some burnouts with it. This is a stock uh, Michelin Scorcher, I think it's a 14075R15. Um, pretty much, I, I believe it's the stock tire for the uh, North American Street 500 and 750s. Uh, I'm going to try and show you guys how to change one of these out. We're going to do an experiment, we're going to be putting a obscenely large tire on the back here, so... Um, yeah, you can see these guys have better days. So one of the first things you guys want to do when you're uh, taking off the wheels, back at least, of the 750, uh, your tensioners, this is what keeps your belt in tension, um, proper tension. I like to back those off uh, a full revolution on both sides, left and right. Um, I do mark, though, and I'll show you guys here in a second. I do mark these so I, I have a general reference of where it started and where it ends up. All right, now you guys can see, maybe you can see, I don't know. I've taken green paint pen and I just mark my nut and this bracket here. I'm doing one full rotation back. So now that there's some space in here and a little gap. And now we're gonna crack this, pull it off, and we should get some slack. And on to the next step. Okay, we got that nut off now. Uh, the one thing I'm gonna caution you guys is you have spacers. Uh, I'm giving you guys a middle finger. You got spacers here. Now my setup's obviously a little different because I uh, I have a Free Spirits Brembo conversion. Um, but make sure when you guys are taking the axle off, front and rear, uh, keep track of what side your spacers are on because that makes a huge difference. You put the wrong spacer on, you're gonna offset your tire and it's gonna suck. Anyways, we got that nut off. We, uh, we got slack on that belt now. You get, the lighting's kind of crappy over there, but um, because you backed off your nuts on the tensioners, you got some slack. All you want to do is uh, punch the axle out. When you guys are doing that, um, use a rubber mallet. Don't use a solid hammer. If all you have is a solid hammer, maybe put a block, a wooden block here, just as uh, something to lessen the impact. If you guys use a steel hammer on this, there's a high possibility you're going to gull your threads, wreck your axle, get mad, and you have to chase the threads or even buy a new axle. So Okay, so it literally took me two soft taps with my mallet, and I got it out this far. The axle should be able to just pull that out. Uh, if you have your, re your wheel off the ground, it's going to drop on you. Just a heads up. I got mine up on the jack right now, so it is going to drop. Okay. So we got the axle out. Uh, just a quick suggestion for you guys. You can do whatever you want because you guys, you guys know what you're doing. But if I know that axle is going to be out for a little bit, I like to put all my spacers on the axle along with the nut in the order they came off, so that it's all together. So basically, what I have here now is the uh, you can see the silver spacer, which is for your left side. The black spacer that came with my uh, Free Spirits upgrade kit. Um, then you have the washer, which goes against the nut, and then obviously the nut over here. I just, when I'm taking bikes apart, guys, I am notorious for losing stuff. So over the years, I've just learned to put it back together kind of and just try and keep it all together. So now that we got the axle out, we got it taken care of, it's put away. You want to flip your belt over the crush drive in the rear. Then you want to come over here and you want to work the caliper off the rotor. And once you do that, this rear tire will come out easy peasy. Okay, so we've... Flip the belt over the crush drive. Um, this, my caliper assembly is actually pretty easy. All I have to do is move it forward and up and out of the way and you can see, there it is. Tire rolls out like so. Now I do wanna take a quick second here. Um, some of you guys on the online forums and on Facebook there on various groups, you've, you've probably heard me comment about a crush drive. And some of you guys might not understand what that is. Um, base or uh, what is it crush drive compensator or something like that that comes right off it's just held in there all right comes out like so lighting's bad uh but you see your rubber in here now that's what's called the crush drive and it it's basically a cushion um and it's what sets the 750 apart from a lot of other harleys um because just how big the the hub is and how it's uh, your pulley goes on to the uh, uh, your, your wheel. And this is actually what it is. It's actually uh, a molded piece of rubber 
uh, you can see it's flexible, it's bendable, uh, pretty soft durometer. It fits into here, into place. Okay, so we got all the air out of the tire. Um, don't try and do this with air in your tire, it's going to suck. Anyways, we got spoons. All we're going to do is bust the bead um, and take this off. I don't have the luxuries of a $5,000 tire machine with the shop. Uh, I do it the old fashioned way, but uh, you know what? It works. And a big thanks to my buddy Ross. Uh, if you guys seen that uh, the video of the KTM Duke and the Street 750 exhaust notes, uh, the rider of the KTM Ross was uh, nice enough to lend me a spoon so we can do this today. So all we're going to do though is break the bead and then pull the tire off. Alright, so the air is out. We've broken the bead and uh, these blue things, what they're called rim savers. Um, basically, when you're using tire spoons the old school way, it's force, mechanical force. You could rack your rims. You want to protect them. So basically, now you just uh, use your spoons, work your way around the tire, and pull the tire over the rim, and then do the same for the other side. Okay, with a lot of uh, brute mechanical force, we've got the tire off. Worn to pieces but uh, yeah so next step put the new one on all right so we got the uh, new old tire on the rim there <laughs> you guys can see I actually had to uh, take the rotor off because I had cords from the uh, the one I burnt off there wrapped around the hub so anyways tires on uh, inflated uh, for tire pressure, 42 PSI in the front, I believe it's 30, or sorry, 42 PSI for the rear, and I believe it's 30 PSI for your front tires. Uh, it's on, so now we're just going to go ahead and uh, remount it onto the back and uh, see what this does. Okay, so we got the tire mounted, kind of got it in place. Uh, had a question on a Facebook group already. Does it fit? Yes, barely, but it does fit. Um, one thing I like to do whenever I have an axle out is grease so you probably can't see it but there's them film the grease on there um, as well as the insides of the inserts here I like to uh, grease lubrication is good okay so when you're setting the tension on your belt uh, the alignment of the axle what you want to do is you want to measure from the center of your swing arm bolt you get a little hole in there you want to measure to the center of your axle. You want to do that on both sides. Now, in theory, you want equal distance on both sides. Um, but what I've noticed is that sometimes your belt will rub right here on the frame. You guys might have seen some pictures on Facebook. There's been a few guys that have chewed up belts. And I think what's happening is they're, uh, they're aligning from center to there but uh you're not taking into account that the belt's rubbing on the frame so what i do is i adjust till i get my tension and then i adjust half a flat or a flat here and there just to make sure i pull the belt off the frame so like i say you can get fancy measuring tools it's like a long rod that goes there to there i just uh use good old tape measure and uh that's how i do it I've had uh, master techs go and check my work and kind of just be like, holy fuck, well, do it your way then, because it's good. So, as far as belt tension, I'm, uh, uh, how do I say this? Let your conscience be your guide. If you're doing this, taking on this project, hopefully you know tension, what a good belt tension is, what isn't. You don't want it too loose, you don't want it too tight. Uh, I guess it kind of comes with experience. Um, doing it a few times, but uh, yeah, you set your tension, and then uh, once you get your tension set with your tensioner bolts, lock down your axle on the other side and uh, take it for a spin, which is what we're going to try and do here. All right, for my Street 500 and Street 750 brothers and sisters out there, uh, our tire sizes are limited with the 15 inch rim, uh, but a 170 80 R15 will fit no problem on the bike. You got about a uh, an inch, maybe a little less, three quarters of an inch of clearance to the rear of the swing arm, but, uh, or sorry, to the front of the swing arm. But anyways, guys, yeah, that tire does fit, and I just took it out for a spin, and, uh, 
yeah hopefully this helps uh just one thing i will mention when you guys if you do step up in tire sizes your speedometer is going to be out if you got a cool programmer like tts master tune or the race tuner you can easily change that setting in the uh ecm so your speedo will read correct i'm not sure what the other uh tuners out there but i imagine they would um so yeah just if you guys do step up on tires just make sure you guys uh adjust your speedometers accordingly else your speedos will be out uh anyways guys have a great one and uh thanks for watching